this one has such an exciting title. Let me see if I can say all of that. <laughs> it's <laughs> about cross-cultural exchange and infographic technology. Now that's a real buzzword right now, the infographic technology. And in particular, this one is about environmental sustainability. And I'm really excited to have both Lisa and Alicia with me again, who will present tonight. And I'm really excited about learning about Pictograph, which is the tool of choice for the information technology. So who's going to start? Will that be you, Lisa? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Take I'll be it away. Start. Thank you, Carol, so much. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Hi, Katrina. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so as Carol said, yes, today we are going to talk about cross-cultural exchange and infographic technology. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about cross-cultural exchange, and Alicia will be the one. My colleague here, Alicia, is here with me. Um, although we both have the same name, we've got some technology links a little uh, messed up this morning. <laughs> Um, and we're going to talk about this all in relationship to environmental sustainability. We're going to give you uh, a six-week project that can be used and implemented into the classroom. So um, we're from Know My World. And Know My World is a global education resource. It's got our uh, URL over here if you're interested in just uh, popping us up on your internet to see a little bit more about us, who we work with, things like that. Um, Aussie Live being one of the wonderful organizations. Um, and we have lots of different uh, projects and programs that uh, focus on connecting countries and cultures, students and individuals in different areas uh, to help create transformation in education. Okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am the program operations for Know My World. And what that means is I do a lot of the background work to make sure that all of the exchanges that we uh, facilitate run very smoothly. So I work out all the kinks. Uh, something interesting about me, I lived on the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador uh, for a semester when I was working on my master's degree. And uh, I worked with a lot of indigenous populations, which really sparked uh, a passion for creating programs that focus on global issues while allowing students to create local change in their communities. Um, and I, I'm also a yoga teacher. Uh, Alicia, would you like to tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Thank you, Lisa. As you can see, um, it's popping up as Lisa's name. Um, our names sound familiar, but my name's actually Alicia. Um, and I am the Educational Coordination Manager for Know My World. Um, so what I do with Know My World is I train interns for facilitation. Throughout our exchanges, we have facilitators um, who go in and in the exchanges and help our teachers and administrators with their um, participants, with their partners together. So that's one of the things I do for Know My World. I'm, a, I'm also the instructional technology specialist. So um, as we all are at Know My World, and um, but for me, I, um, I go out and I research platforms, technology platforms that will help um, you in your exchanges for your projects. Um, I'm also a homeschool teacher and private tutor for grades K through 9. I'm also an online teacher um, and tutor for adults in uh, foreign languages. And I'm also pursuing an advanced certificate in creative arts therapy. A little fun fact about myself, um, I've connected my homeschool students in exchanges and helped them build friendships around the world. And they really enjoy um, making new friends uh, through the computer or on um, different uh, technology platforms uh, around the world. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting point about um, the connections that students get to make in these exchanges and teachers as well, is that a lot of them do end up building friendships. Um, an interesting fact that just came to mind when you were speaking, Alicia, was um, one of the surveys that we got back in our last, uh, our last semester report 
was one of the students was talking about how they were going through a very difficult time in their life, and they found that the only person that they could really connect to was literally half a world away. Um, so it's really interesting to see the relationships that develop through these cross-cultural exchanges. Um, and talking about exchanges, what exactly are they? Well, a digital cross-cultural exchange is just a learning relationship between two or more classrooms in the world. Um, so their focus is on project collaboration and various digital media. So depending on the needs of the classroom, depending on a uh, sort of project that you want to do or what you want your students to learn, um, you would connect with another classroom somewhere in the world and a Know My World facilitator would help build that relationship. So once you went to our website, which was on slide two, um, the knowmyworld.org, and you requested an exchange, we would find someone that fits your needs and we would connect the two of you and build a project. It's as simple as that. Um, and this is, on the left hand side, these are things that our exchanges are built around. And on the right hand side, it's sort of what the facilitator does. This is a little bit of the process. So we find a match for you, we introduce you, we look at the goals that you're looking to reach, which I'll talk about a little bit in the next slide, uh, because there are always obviously academic goals, but there are other aspects to wanting to learn about culture. Um, and we help you develop a project and create a timeline that will work right into your classroom. And the way it works is through this model that we've developed, CCAL, Social, Emotional, Cultural, and Academic Learning. Uh, some of them are service learning, if that's something you're interested in incorporating, project-based learning, uh, and multi-generational is always very interesting too, but they're all different ways of how to incorporate them into the classroom. And this is how to deepen the content. So looking at the academic aspects of it, what is the subject that you're teaching? What is the content that you want to cover? What are the critical thinking questions and skills that you're looking to get your students really involved in? Um, and then social, what's the appropriateness for uh, the interaction between the students in my classroom, the interaction between the students in my classroom and the students in the other part of the world? Um, how is it that we want them to build these relationships and develop depending on the age, depending on the culture, depending on a lot of different factors? So we look at all these different aspects to help build the project, and we look at your goals as teachers as well. So with all of that in mind, uh, we're going to talk about incorporating technology into the classroom as well. Now that we have the goals and we see how cross-cultural exchanges work, the way that they're going to work most definitely is by communicating on some sort of a platform. So Alicia is going to walk you through the platform that we chose to sort of highlight in relationship to this exchange. So Alicia. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, so we're going to take a look now at the technology in the classroom, how it's being used, the benefits, and the technology platform for this exchange that we are presenting um, this evening or this morning. So when we look at... Hang on one second. I'm sorry. Was that a question in there, Carol? Um, were there any questions about anything before we move on, just to clarify? Were there quite about project-based learning, service learning, any of those aspects? Uh, I'm not sure that it was a question from the audience. Okay. So let me just double check with everybody. Do you have a question for Lisa? Or are we good to go? But it is a good thing to stop every now and then just to make yeah. sure. Um, yeah, one of the things that can often happen is if you're on a mobile device, you quite often find that you drop out frequently and then you need to come back. Uh, so it's like a revolving door. So back to you. Got it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Alicia. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure that everything was clear before we moved on to your section. <laughs> Not a problem. No, that was good. Okay. All right. So. Taking a look at technology in the classroom, um, 
how it's being used, the benefits of technology, and the platform that we're going to take a look at today would be PictoChart. So first, um, let's take a look at how technology is being used. Um, technology is being used in the classroom with support. In the exchange, the support that is being used, it's also helping us communicate, it's helping us connect and create projects. We're also looking at in, um, technology being instructional, and this is the ability to use the technology um, to learn uh, to be responsible citizens and asking how can we share and how can I use this application when it's instructional. And we're also looking at developing skills. We're deepening on the technology with writing, critical thinking, and conversational skills. And that also reflects back to CCAL as Lisa was um, presenting before. But when we take a deeper look at how it's be technology is being used, we ask ourselves, who is this supporting? And in technology, using technology in the classroom, it's supporting the teachers and the students in the project. We as facilitators for Know My World are supporting you in the project if you have any technical issues or technology questions. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Teachers and students are being supported, and we're there to support you. Now, who is being instructed throughout this? The teachers and students are being instructed throughout the project. And what skills are being developed as we discuss their deepening with the technology, writing, critical thinking, and conversational skills. Um, but we're also looking at communication, and technology skills are being developed throughout the project with the help from teachers, the facilitators like us, and each other. And of course, all of these academic skills are being developed for students. Now, the benefits of this technology, of course, is connecting, communicating, creating, and learning. Students and teachers can connect, communicate, and create using technology. For this exchange, students connect on communicating platforms and create with learning on infographic platforms. Okay, so. Now I'm going to do a technology demonstration and we're going to look at a picto chart. So I'm going to do a screen share at the moment or an app share. Okay. I am just asking everyone to just let me know that you can see my screen of Picto Chart. Thank you, Liz. There's one more okay. Perfect. Okay. So everyone can see my uh, screen. So this is PictoChart.com. And um, PictoChart is an infographic creator. And as you can see here, um, there are two different ways that you can, you can sign up. You can click the Sign Up button, or you can start um, by clicking Start for Free. Now, there's really no difference with either one. Either one that you click, you're going to have to go ahead and sign up with the website, um, putting in your information and going through. So what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in myself. And what's great is you can, you know, log in with Facebook if you'd like or if you have a Google account, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put in my email and my password. Okay, and then here we have, uh, as I logged in, um, I have a, di a couple of different opportunities of what I want to look for on how to start a picto chart. Now, what I like to look at um, at the moment are infographics. And basically what an infographic is, is an online poster is what you're making. Um, it's a poster where you could make it um, any way that you, you kind of like, as PictoChart do, does have a couple of templates that you can choose from. But when you do this, um, it goes ahead and you could share it on the web. So 
I'm going to go ahead and look at a couple of the free themes that they have. You can create your own, as you can see on the left-hand side, but you can also choose um, a few free themes if you if you like. They give you a nice variety of free themes to choose from. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you also have other ones to choose from, but those are called what we call on PictoChart level ups. And if you decide you want to do a level up, you will have to pay for the website. But they do give you a nice variety if you decide that you do not want to do that. So with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and um, create my own here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to click on Create. I hover over the one I want and click on Create. And here is a step-by-step, -step, um, you know, process of how to create your own infographic. But before I go ahead, I'm just going to go and see if anybody has any questions from here. No, I did ask the question of everyone, Alicia, if they had used it before. Okay. And most are saying no, but Bridget okay. did say that she'd had a go at it unsuccessfully. Um, and I noticed, because I only had a look tonight, that it provides some learning cheats sheets. So I was quite impressed with that. Yeah, it, it does. It, it does. And it, it's a really, you know, it's actually um, a, a great resource. It's a very quick and easy resource to use um, for making things like this. Like what we're going to be doing is making an infographic ourselves or a poster or things like that. So it's, it's very um, useful and, and it's very easy to use. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and, and, um, and make an infographic for us very quickly. Um, so this infographic, as you can see, it's blank, has nothing on it. Um, if you choose a theme that um, PixelChart has already done for you, um, it'll definitely pop up on your screen and then you could just make it your own. But I like to use um, a blank sheet and do my own thing. So. As you can see on the left-hand side, you're going to choose shapes, icons, photos, um, or photo frame. What I like to do first is I like to click on my background and choose a color. So I'm going to choose a quick color first. I actually like these earthy tones. There we go. And then I would like to choose a a title. Now this is this exchange that we are going over um, is about saving energy. So I'm going to actually ask our audience if they have um, any type of title to make for our infographic. Does anybody have a title? Think about um, saving energy, what we would want to put on our poster. Well, it can be anything in relationship to environmental sustainability, too. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feel free to text it in. And Jason's suggesting how to reduce our carbon footprint. Okay. Oh, reduce, reuse, recycle. Good. We have a lot of good ones coming in here. Uh, there's a few more coming in there. Okay. We've got three R's from Nimi, and Sophie's suggesting this one, our children, our future. Hmm, that's a good one too. That's going to be a tough choice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead um, and give this a title. I love the titles that we were, were given for this infographic. So let's, let's go with um, our three R's as reducing, reusing, and recycling. So
I go ahead and I put that in our infographic. And of course, I want to make it so we can beautifully seen. There we go, nice and bright. So I have a title, which is perfect. And then what I like to go ahead to do is put in some infographics. They have icons and photos. And I click on my icons and I go ahead, since this is about um, environmental sustainability, but we have our reduce, reuse, and recycle, I want to go ahead and um, put in pictures that would have to do with reducing, reusing, and recycling. So maybe, uh, you know, we want to uh, make sure that we are keeping our energy level down. And whenever we're out of a room, we turn off a lamp. So maybe I want a lamp on my infographic. So I go ahead. There we go. In our search engine. And then I click or I drag my lamp and have a beautiful lamp on here. Maybe we also want to make sure that we are um, turning off the water. So maybe I'll put in a faucet, faucet drip. That might be a great one. Oh, well, maybe just the faucet. There we go. And then maybe one more. You know, maybe we should be turning off our computers. There we go. My computer one. Now, what's great about this is that you can have that on the top, and then it gives you kind of three canvases that you can go ahead and do different things. So, what I'd also like to show is um, you can also use your tools on the side and you can insert charts and maps or even videos. Again, because it's an infographic that you're able to share, you can actually make videos and then um, put that up too. So I'm going to actually take a look at our, as our, at our charts. First, I want to make sure I have my background the same color on my second canvas. There we go. And then I'm going to delete these question marks because we don't need them. But I want to go ahead and in my infographic part, oops, tool, I apologize. I want to put in the chart. So basically, here it gives you a lot of different options to choose from. So I might want to chart a bar chart because maybe um, your students have done a lot of research and they want to go ahead and um, show the chart that they've the information that they found. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my chart right here. And it makes a beautiful uh, chart. You can customize this if you like with different colors. As you can see in the settings part, I click on settings and I can make them different colors. Each of the bars different colors. I can also on the, my data, of course, that's where your um, X and Y axis is. And what you want to do is you want to make it different. So for example, I might want to put in here, you know, maybe computer. So we're talking about environmental sustainability. Um, our lamp. Maybe this is all about energy, how much energy we use throughout our day. Um, computers, lamps, and um, whatever the other one would be. So I update my chart. So now I just have three, which is fine. And again, you can customize the colors. Now, my third can canvas here, I might want to go ahead and I might want to insert a map and showing where this information is coming from. So again, I go to my background, I click on the same color. And then I'm going to quickly insert a map. And they give you all different maps to choose from. I decide that I want this map. And you go, of course, you can go to your settings and do different colors. I'll do like a nice yellow so it could pop out. 
and I insert my map. And you can give it a title, of course, too, if you prefer. And there we go, a quick infographic for reducing, reusing, and recycling. So with that, does anybody have any questions about how to use PictoChart? It's, it's Carol, and I was just wondering about the terminology, I think, sure. really, um, it, it's very simple and I love what it can do. Can you just explain what they mean by the word canvas? So are they three separate segments of the infograph or, or, or what? Yeah, it's, uh, the canvases are, are three separate, um, kind of like three separate posters, but what, info, um, what PictoChart does is they put three different ones combined into one. So let me show you actually um, a finished product, product that I have. This is our finished product, but I also have one that I've made as well. And maybe you could show them uh, an example of one of the, the templates that are pre-made so they can see sort of how they show up differently, maybe the roadmap one. Sure. Well, I have that too. So I have um, a couple of them. All right, so here's, here's this one. Um, this is a roadmap one, and basically it was three canvases just like before, and um, where it says road to a cleaner environment at the very, very top, that would be canvas one. And then where it has make the product and everything, that's canvas two. And then at the bottom, where it says sell your product, would be canvas three. So all three canvases come together as one long, like one long um, infographic. They all come together. So um, PictoChart gives you enough room so you can put in as much information as, you, as you'd like. Now, if I went back to PictoChart, and they're free themes. So it's, it's the same thing again. So this is one of their free themes, for example, the startup landscape in Malaysia, again, with the three canvases. Oh, there we go. So the top one here, they're showing about population and mobile cellular subscription. That's Canvas 1. Canvas 2 would probably be about the funding sources. And then Canvas 3 would be about community. So you can do it in three different ways. And that is Pixel Chart. Well done for that one, Alicia. I enjoyed watching your creative thinking at work there. And a uh, couple of comments coming through there for you in the text chat. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, it's, it's a great resource. It's very, you know, simple easy, um, even for students to use. Um, and we have some examples that we'll be showing in a couple of minutes, actually, of a, um, a few students have used this great resource and great tool. So, all right. Okay. So, moving forward in our presentation this evening or this morning, um, so PictoChart, as you can see, it says PictoChart is used for creating infographics, but infographics um, are also, um, could be posters, not just infographics to share on the web. And um, PictoChart is easy to create, as we saw. Um, it's customizable, so you could take a template and, re and customize it for yourself. 
they're printable, which is great. So you can go ahead and save it, and you can also print it. And of course, you can also share them digitally. It gives you the option of sharing. Um, you can share it on Facebook. You can share it through an email. You could share it in Google. Um, so they're really, really resourceful. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, give it off to you, Lisa. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, I, that was it, the great thing about technology. Um, and I'm reading the the comments too. Carol said sharing online is almost mandatory. It is even with these exchanges. It's so important. You know, the students are looking to connect. That's where they feel they get the most benefit. It's where they feel they learn the most. In these exchanges, that's what they want more. So finding ways to allow them to share the things that they make and talk about it is so important to the exchange experience. Um, and something that we've learned through doing these exchanges is that the experience of the teacher um, is most definitely the experience of the student. So that's that's one of the reasons that facilitation is so important in this process. Um, and it, you can just look at the facilitation benefits we have listed down here for setting you up in an exchange. We're all certified international educators. Uh, we've mostly worked, studied, lived abroad in one capacity or another. Um, we're, we help with the goal setting process, referencing back to CCAL, and we help customize your projects. So if you're interested in teaching your students about infographics and you want them to use this technology or some other technology, um, the nice thing is that most of it is pretty adaptable, as Alicia was sharing before. Um, if you want to put up the picture of the, the little arrows, reduce, reuse, you cycle, um, if that's just a simple basic message that you know elementary level schools are trying to get out, that's something that they can create and even print out and hang in their schools. Uh, whereas with higher level students who are looking to do research, there are ways to also incorporate that into the infographic. So it can be used in different ways for different things depending on what you're sort of trying to bring into the classroom. Um, and so this is the part of the project we're going to show you the six week outline of what an exchange could look like. Uh, we'll go over the goals and milestones, the plan of action, because uh, basically what will happen if you decide to do an exchange with Know My World is we will help you set up a list of tasks that you will be doing in your classroom to make sure that you meet all of the things that you say you want to meet. Um, so someone's always checking in with you because it's you're a world away from the person that you're working with. So sometimes there can be sort of this out of sight, out of mind mentality uh, and the facilitator is really there to help make sure you meet the goals you set out for yourself and your students so you both can get the best experience, so you all can get the best experience as possible. And as we have been discussing, technology is such an important part of the process. And for this exchange, creating environmental sustainability using PictoChart uh, is what we're doing. So the PictoChart is going to help plan and campaign. But with most exchanges, there are more than one sort of platform that you're going to be using. Right, so the project revolves around PictoChart, but students are still going to want to communicate in some way. You're going to want them to introduce themselves so they can build relationships and communicate with one another. Some examples of that are Edmodo, Facebook, Google Plus communities. Um, and a lot of teachers like to incorporate some sort of video conferencing. Now, there are time differences because we all live in different parts of the world, but there are creative ways to get around that. Um, creating sort of video video diaries, video journals, ways for students to uh, connect and post on those other collaborative platforms, the Edmodo or the Google Plus. So um, are there any questions at this point before I move on? Was all of that clear? No, it was very clear. And uh, the question that Jason was asking has been answered by Alicia. So that's good. You've sparked some more interest here. Brilliant stuff. Perfect. Okay. All right. So a little bit about the beginning of the project. In the first two weeks, there is uh, a certain it's relationship building. 
uh, and that's what the facilitator is there to help foster the relationships between the teachers to help make their students comfortable so their students can begin having conversations. Um, and whenever whenever exchanges begin and you're getting students involved in uh, a new topic, you really want to allow them an opportunity to explore what it is that they're going to be discussing. So no matter what level they are, um, creating some sort of prompt to allow them to think about what they think about environmental sustainability, you know, because that's the topic of this program. So where do they see it? What is their relationship to it? Um, so it gives them a sense of ownership with whatever it is that they're talking about and builds a level of comfortability. The essential questions will really help. And I find in the beginning of projects, it's helpful to allow them opportunities to journal in one way or another so they can get clear about what they're thinking before they start sharing with other people as well. Um, maybe starting in the classroom and then offering opportunities for them to share bits and pieces either in small groups on, the, on a technology platform and then slowly moving into dialogue. But allowing them an opportunity to understand the issues will give them a sense of ownership about what it is that they're uh, going to be working on. Um, so once they understand what's happening, they can start asking themselves, you know, what exchange, what changes do they want to make in their communities? Is there an issue? Do they live maybe near the Great Barrier Reef? Where you know, what is it that they're trying to take care of for the future of their community? Um, so the facilitator is there to help maintain that communication and to work out any of these technology issues in the beginning of, uh, of this process. And part of what I was explaining before about the tasks is really making sure that uh, all students not only have an opportunity, but are able to get responses from one another. So creating clear tasks within the technology is very important. Um, CTAL at this point is really looking at the academic, the subject and the content, because this is the focus of the project, and cultural. It's knowing uh, how to talk to a new set of people. Cultural, the awareness, the knowledge, uh, and the picture chart, Alicia, would you like to share what's happening at the, in the, with the picture chart in the beginning? Sure. So here, as you can see um, in our picture chart, um, we made a road map. And this road map is um, one that I made that students would be taking a step-by-step -step process in their campaign. So um, this is the plan of action development, um, small group work, and of course, they're learning through technology. So on this roadmap, we have um, students will be, um, step one is they're introducing themselves to one another. Um, then next, they are going to start their research. Then they're going to collect their data. They're going to start building their project. And then they're going to present to their uh, teammates um, within their little their groups, and then they're going to go ahead and present present their project um, around the world, um, and then at the end they're going to reflect. So this is a plan of action for the entire uh, campaign, the entire project. But students are going to take an infographic, make an infographic for their step by step project, um, and this would be just an example. Lisa, go ahead. Thanks, Alicia. Um, yeah, so on, on the last screen, if you're looking at weeks one and two, the picture chart assignment, uh, as Alicia was explaining, is that students will use the technology to create a plan of action for addressing the personal environmental issue that they decide they want to focus on. Um, and, and what this does with new technology, especially as Alicia went in and showed you before, uh, there is a create your own, which is ultimately the goal of this project. but there are also templates that they can start to use to understand the tools inside of the technology. And that is how this is set up. It gives them an opportunity to go in and sort of learn how to use the technology in an easy way. So if, since this is already set up for them, it allows them to start playing with the tools, uh, understanding where the typing is, 
um, and it gets them familiar with a new technology and, and helps them with more group work in this project. So up to this point, are there any other questions or are we clear to move on to the next section? No, I think we're ready to move on. All right, nice. Unless there's someone who wants to use the microphone. No, we're all good. good. Please continue. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so after they've done their introductions uh, and a little bit of planning and research and they know what it is they're going to do, uh, the next step for this project would be researching campaign development. So now that they understand what it is that they want to do and what it is that they want to work on, um, they can start collecting data. Uh, and collecting data looks like a lot of different things. So they can interview people in their local communities to see how they're responding to things. They can talk to people in their school so they can learn interviewing skills. They can research on the computer and figure out what people are doing in other countries. Uh, who maybe have the same sort of issue. What have people been doing in the past? What are uh, the political world views about this issue today? So depending on what you're teaching and what angle you want your students to look at the project, um, there are many different ways to approach it. And in week three, creating, we have them creating a video conference uh, to sort of share ideas. So it's like, this is the topic that I want to discuss, and then they get on either a video conference or uh, if they're in small groups, they can share videos on the platform, the other platform that you've provided for them. So they have an opportunity to really voice what it is that they want to see change in their communities and maybe get some feedback from someone who has a completely different perspective. So it allows them an opportunity for you know, collaborative sharing uh, across the world because sometimes someone outside of the space that you live can see things in a different way and help uh, or just give a different idea that you might want to use. And then the campaign development, using the technology and really starting to understand whether it is, uh, what, what do you want your campaign to look like? What is the message that you want to share? So group work in that aspect is really beneficial. The CCAL at this point, it's all about relationships, building a campaign, talking to people in communities, sharing with students from another part of the world, getting to understand about uh, issues that students their age are facing somewhere else, and sharing uh, the issues that they have in, uh, in a productive way as well. The emotional aspect, understanding the choices. Well, who is it that you're going to approach with this message? What is the message that you're going to say? Um, recently, we, we had a video exchange and students were thinking about topics to make and um, one, of the, one of the things that the teacher was talking about was how um, we had these conversations about fighting against things, but well, really the message we're trying to share is, you know, she, she wanted to share with her students was fighting for something, you know, instead of fighting against something, like stand for something powerful. So what sort of choices are they going to make? Uh, even in the messages that they're sharing with their community and with the world, ultimately. Um, and then again, with the cultural knowledge and skills, it's really understanding uh, sharing cross-culturally. And the facilitation at this point is really helping with the integrity of the exchange, task and time management, um, and we're experienced and resourceful doing lots of types of different exchanges. Some countries uh, like I was looking at other technology keynotes, um, I don't remember who had that, NIMI maybe. Um, certain things do and don't work when you go to different countries. Some things are popular in different areas. So um, we've, we've learned lots of different things working in different countries. I think it's more than 24 countries now, 27, something like that. Um, so really having that understanding of maybe you can look here, maybe you can check out this technology, maybe you can check out this website. So the collaboration is always helpful. Um, and Alicia, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, the picture charts? This is, so this is the campaign development. This is 
Um, the stage, that's what the students will be doing at this point, is working on the campaign. Um, so, yeah. When, Sure. Thank you, Lisa. This is my favorite part of the project because uh, I had an experience with um, a uh, very similar exchange that we are discussing um, through environmental sustainability. And I had two, I was the facilitator for um, an exchange where I had two classrooms, one from Mexico, one from India, come together and they did an environmental sustainability project. They used PictoChart. And they made these beautiful, beautiful infographics. These are all done by students. Um, as you can see, they were talking about um, how to um, kind of reduce, reuse, recycle, how to um, you know, really conserve energy or conserve resources throughout their communities. So they made these with uh, PictoChart, and they share them together on a, um, on a platform. Uh, their platform of choice was uh, Facebook. They made a private group and they shared with each other and then they discussed them. And what was also brilliant about this was that they took these visuals and they printed them and then they decided to go around their communities and try to get other people involved in how to conserve energy, how to reduce um, you know, resources and use other resources of, of energy. So it was really, really great. Um, and this is all with the help of um, an infographic maker. And again, it was PictoChart. So it was, it was just great to see how they all came together from two different parts of the world, India and they also, and Mexico. Um, so yeah, this is, these are beautifully made. This is what um, PictoChart can do for you and um, in an exchange just like this. So thank you, Lisa, go ahead. Hello? Okay, sorry, I forgot to press my microphone button. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. No, they're, they're, they're wonderful. That was a great project. Um, I agree with uh, the statement before with Liz made that they do, they look great. Um, so this would be the ultimate product um, of this exchange, and it would look different depending on the classroom. So weeks five and six, uh, now that the project is complete, is community involvement, connection, and reflection. So allowing the students to go out and spread the message, uh, something so often that we talk about, you know, I, I know I've mentioned this in, in the last webinar too, is that so, so often we feel helpless, like what is it we can do? What can we do? What can we do? Well, this is something that students can do. It's a way to help empower them to see what they can do to make some sort of change in their communities. It gives them a sense of agency. And not only allowing them the opportunity to start going out and talking to people, getting comfortable talking to people, and seeing uh, what differences they can make. So on the right-hand side here is the, the completed uh, picture chart that Alicia sort of made the similar one, a similar one to this when we were, when she was doing the uh, demonstration before, excuse me. So this is what the final product would look like. Um, in in very short terms. A lot of the times they take much longer because of the research <laughs> that's involved. The chart would have to have data to support it if you were going to use some sort of chart. Um, but it, it gives them ways to sort of understand what they can do. And depending on what they're researching, you know, they can be asked the question, what can you do in the future? How can you check on this? Um, you know, sometimes people like to have their students check in six months later or check in a year later. Some, some teachers keep the Facebook communities open so the students can keep having the conversation, you know, creating local change and creating global conversations. So what can you do to spread the word uh, on a larger scale? Having them just start to even think about these ideas so as they continue moving through um, the schooling process, It'll stay with them and they'll start to look to find ways, what, what is it that I can do? How can I make a difference? And sometimes, especially at these ages, it starts with just having a basic conversation about it. So this gives them a tool to help them talk about it. Um, 
Okay, so and the facilitation at this point, uh, obviously the last week is allowing students an opportunity to reflect and get some closure. So the facilitators really helping with the, the wrap, wrapping up process, uh, making sure that students are complete, uh, reflecting on their experience. Because there's always challenges um, one way or another, whether it's you know technology or timing or whatever, but the challenges offer such an opportunity for a learning experience. It's through the challenges that we learn so much about ourselves. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to say hello and it ends up being more difficult to say goodbye. But that's um, another great thing about technology is there's always a way uh, to sort of stay in communication. If you give someone an empowering topic to discuss, uh, it could be more apt that they'll stay in communication about it if they have a certain sort of powerful relationship to that topic. Um, and it also gives them an opportunity to reflect not only uh, about their own experience, but how, how did this project uh, land with the people that they shared it with? How did they think it was interpreted um, by, you know, how, how did they work with their, group, their groups in their country and in their partner's country? How did people in their community respond to the message they were sharing? Because they're not always going to have positive responses. And it, you know, allows them an opportunity to reflect on that and to see how they feel about it and say, you know, see that it's okay to still go out there and spread the message if that's something that they believe in. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to uh, create that experience for them. And then understanding the impact to something that Know My World does is we send out surveys at the end of our exchanges to get an understanding about uh, what, what new cultural awareness did the students come to uh, about their own country, about their own culture, and then what new understanding or awareness did they gain from about, about this other culture and this other country? Um, because we all have certain ideas about uh, other places in the world and sharing and exchanging with another school or another individual or another classroom really helps open up uh, our understanding. I did an exchange once between um, well, the U.S. and the Galapagos when I was down there. And something that the teacher shared with me from New York was that her students got that it wasn't just a color on a map because all they see is, you know, the map of the world in their classroom and the countries are a whole bunch of different colors. But what they got was that there were kids that lived there that wore the same clothes that they did and liked the same kind of music that they did. And, had problems the same way that they did and liked to go out and play games the same way that they did. So finding ways to connect with one another on that sort of human level um, is a lot of the, you know, the cultural, social, emotional awareness that they come to through creating this academic project that really allows them to be proactive in their communities, learn to use new technologies, develop critical thinking skills. There's so many different things that you can pull out of these projects. And it's, again, going to depend on uh, what it is you're looking to do with your students. And then the content documentation. So uh, we also collect all of the content. Um, and we're very uh, aware of privacy. If we, we do collect release forms from students, but even if we get those to share the information, we only use first names. We would say, like, you know, Sally from Denmark. Uh, I don't know if Sally's from Denmark, but Sally from Denmark did this project. Um, and then we would just share something, a pictograph like this, or the pictograph that you saw on the last page. That's, that's how we share. We share the work that the students do um, to sort of inspire new ideas for other classrooms and to share the work that people are doing in different parts of the world. Um, so are there any questions at this point before I move on? I, I, I know something. No, no questions that I can see at the moment. I just wanted to remind you, though, that we have just over five minutes till the end of or the top of the hour. Yeah, no, we're uh, that's perfect. We're we're at the end. We're we're at our reflection point. <laughs> um, so, just a couple of questions after seeing the presentation. What are some of the benefits that you see to creating an exchange like this? And how would you maybe implement something like this, a project like this, into uh, your classroom? Yeah, Cheryl is actually going. Cheryl, Carol is going to share. Oh, as a PDF. Um, 
Carol, I think you, you have the uh, link to SlideShare, right? Okay, there we go. Right. Yes, I do. Let me just put that into place for you straight away because uh, I knew that that question would come up. And <laughs> Thank you so much for already uploading that one, Lisa. And Absolutely. if you want a copy of it, it's here. Uh, that's your secret URL <laughs> to get it. Uh, it will work on your iPad. Okay. So are there any comments at this point um, about benefits that you see or how you might want to implement something like this? I mean, feel free to come to the microphone or just type something in. Yeah, it would be lovely if we could have someone using the microphone. <laughs> and this is sometimes a little bit harder if you're on a mobile device, but if there's someone who'd like to tell us their ideas. What you what have you been thinking as you've listened to tonight's presentation? I know my mind's just buzzing, but I want to give someone else a chance. Jason said okay. multiple ed yeah. entry and exit points. Um, I'm, do you mean for the project? like different things to pull out? Is, is is that the aspect that you were talking about? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Jason. Jason. Uh, I'll just say that it, it's actually adaptable for any age group. It doesn't have to be just for in particular groups. So um, if you've got multi-level students in your grade as well, it's also um, they can enter in at their level. Uh, as well as um, you know, higher students or your advanced students as well. So I think that it's a great platform, really good. Absolutely, thank you so much, Jason. Yes, and that's that that's sort of the intention upon creating these projects is allowing them to be adaptable for any age group uh, because these are you know looking at environmental sustainability issues. They are issues that affect all of us. So it's you know what are what are the students seeing at whatever level they're at. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Jason. Um, well, this project was just designed to explain environmental sustainability, but it can be used for any subject. Yeah, as we were just saying, yeah, it's adaptable. Great. Oh, nice, nice, Mimi. Okay. <laughs> All right, I know we're coming to the end here, so it's just, are there any other questions at this point? Um, I, I think people. I think the only other question uh, was someone wanted to know if they could um, join a project. I think that was you, Jason, from an early um, question. So maybe just answer that one for them. So you would go to knowmyworld.org and on the front page there's a box that says request an exchange. Um, a waiting period for projects. It's it's just a matter of finding a, a match for you. You're welcome, Tanya. So when you go to request an exchange, you'll type in what it is that you're looking for and we will find someone who has similar needs. So we'll find the best match that we can find for you and then we just create a presentation you or, or we create a connection. So you would tell us what it is that you're looking for and we just find that for you. We have a, an international database that we use, uh, schools that we work with, yeah. So um, it, it depends on the term and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, please, please go to our website, Request an Exchange. Uh, we're always, and we actually, we have, a, I, I don't know if you do uh, winter break school in Australia, but we have summer school here. And there's a, a school in Taiwan, and, and in Taiwan actually, they're looking to do a three-week summer school exchange starting July 7th. If anyone is interested, just go fill out a request form, or uh, or you can uh, oops, contact us info at Know My World. Right there. And I I know I skipped a slide. Sorry, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. 
<laughs> uh, remember, you can get all of these slides from SlideShare with all the links yeah. in place. So we answered everyone's questions. We're just about to wrap up now. Um, a website for PD certificates. Do you mean for attending tonight, Sophie? Is that what you have in mind? Okay. Um, is Shinko still here? I think he had to drop out. Okay. Um, yeah, for participating in this PD, we do need to be mindful of that, that they need to have um, validation of that. So we'll think about that and put that in place uh, as soon as we can. But what I've done tonight is I've taken a copy of all the participants who have been in the room and I usually share that with the presenters. And you know, if, if asked, we could say, yes, we had uh, a person by the name of Nimi in our audience and a person by the name of Sophie Hendricks in our audience. So at the moment, that's the best we can do. Uh, Bridget is asking, what was the Facebook page that we could go to to like? So I think that one is the facebook.com forward slash know my world, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we might have to consider putting that um, PD validation on our Aussie Live site. So that's another question for our team. Thank you for asking. All right, I have to now say thank you to our two presenters once again who have engaged, enthralled and enlightened us. And <laughs> I'm really excited because I've got so many ideas I want to use the pictograph for now. <laughs> and I'm just going to I'm just going to pop back to this slide to let you know that wait there's more and <laughs> we have two more coming Thank up you. so mark this in your diaries these are the two dates after the term break here in Australia July 8 and July 22nd and Lisa and Alicia will be back with more so I'll just go now to the last slide again and uh, let you finish up now, Lisa and Alicia. Uh, just thank you all for being such a wonderful audience this morning. It's been great to, to interact with you. I love seeing all the comments come up as we present. And it's just so wonderful to be able to share this type of work with, with people. Yeah, I, I, I love that it inspires ideas um, for your classrooms and your students. So thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share this with you. Thank you, Lisa. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I'm really pleased that um, Know My World is now an official partner of yes. Aussie yes. Live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. yeah, who knows where that's going to lead us. I know. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, one and all. I will say thank you to both Lisa and Alicia and welcome you back to the next one in July. Uh, so I'll now close the recording. <laughs>